Good morning, my friends. Happy Wednesday. I almost wasn't ready for you. I'm still getting my paper towels ready and putting my paints out because I started to write a blog post this morning and got lost in doing that, which is a good thing because it's, it's well underway and happened very spontaneously. I love when things that, when things happen spontaneously. Good morning, Sherry. Hi, Barb. Hi, Michael. Hi, Shelly. Welcome, everybody. So, yeah, I'm just prepping my paper towels. I've been working in two different spaces. I have, like, a large palette behind me here that I've been using my fun little wall back here. And then I have my smaller palette on my desktop. And I'm finding it a little challenging going back and forth between the two, but I'll get, I'll get better at it. <laughs> I, I'm just happy to have them both anyway. So today, let me show you what we're going to paint. My friend Beth Bath gave me this photo at an event I was at on um, whatever day it was, uh, Saturday, Sunday. And isn't it stunning? She was somewhere, she told me where it was, but I can't remember. And she gave me that photo and I think she has more. So I've got to like um, nudge her to send me a few more photos because isn't that gorgeous? I can't wait for peony season. Good morning, Emerson. How are you? So, I'm just looking here. Okay, so we need to mix pinks and greens and some yellows. Good morning, Anita. Okay, so let's go down here and mix colors. I think I put out what I needed. I need a little... Um, what would it be called? Um, a studio elf to come clean up all my stuff. My gosh, my art studio. When I put the new wall up, I, meaning my husband, um, it was everything was cleaned up. And now, little by little, it's just going crazy again. I'm just not good at staying tidy. And I'm not productive when everything's put away. If I put everything away, I forget that it even exists. Anybody else like that? Out of sight, out of mind. That's totally, totally how I am. I could have even clothing, anything. I, if I put it away, it's like it doesn't exist. I don't remember I ever had it. Isn't that terrible? I think I've always been like that. That's always why I had trouble studying, I think. I'm a visual, what's that called? A visual learner that... Like if I have to memorize something, I just have to write it down over and over and over again in the same spot of a piece of paper. And that's the only way I can remember it because I remember seeing it, which isn't a very productive way of doing studying, that's for sure. But it got me through school. I guess it'd be worse if I didn't know that about myself. I'm looking for like a shadow color, but that's there is a little bit of that color up in the corner. I'll just hold on to that, but that's kind of going in the wrong direction. For some reason, I can't see anyone's comments today. That's so weird. I don't know why. I think that does happen to some people sometimes. Maybe if you leave and come back, they'll be there. Did you try that? She said, when I try to tidy up, I can't find what I want me to, Anita. Same. It's called being productive. <laughs> I like thinking about it that way. <laughs> yes. I am much more productive having living like that, but it's not comfortable for people I live with. <laughs> so let's get to a lighter pink. I put this violet out here too. I might play with it. That's nice. It's not vibrant enough. Let me put a little bit more of that pink in there. <clears throat> And if anybody's in my inspiring art group, we're going to be doing, making a concertina. I've always wanted to do that. I wanted to actually finish one before we had the class, but <clears throat> I didn't get that far. But I'm excited to do it. It'll be fun. Sometimes you just have to do fun things with your art. <clears throat> Is that good? It's so different mixing small amounts of, of paint 
and yesterday I was working on a 16 by 16 behind me here that I'm going to talk about in my blog post that I was just writing. It had the longest messy middle ever. Like it was, I was about to abandon ship many times on it. Unfortunately, I did film it, so I'm going to write a blog post on it and um, <laughs> tell you about the process. So if you want to be on my newsletter list, just send me a, a direct message and I'll add you. A lot of you probably already are. That's pretty. I feel like mm, I feel like that's good, but I would like a little bit of this really light white with a little, um, just a touch of my, this old Holland violet gray in it. When I see spots where it kind of skews in that direction. Oh, not that much. No, wait, let me clean my palette knife off. So what's new with everyone today? Anything new or fun happening? The peonies are soon going to bloom. That's fun. I love that. All right, that's good. Let me clean this up, and then we'll do some greens. Hi, Shelly. How are you? Oh, let's see. Okay, let me sip of my coffee. Good morning, Ellen. Gosh, I see people at Paragord Retreats, which is where I did my... Um, workshop last year in June and I'm not going to do it this year I'm going to go next year so if anybody wants to join me it was magical it was such a neat experience and I'm going to do it in June of um, 2025 but I keep seeing posts and I have a little bit of like FOMO like I wish I was going this year <clears throat> but I wasn't ready I needed a year off to kind of regroup before doing it again, but I'll, I'll be ready by next year. Let's see. Good greens. Whoops. I keep getting it on here. Purples, greens, pinks. Oh, kind of yellows for the insides here. <clears throat> A little lighter. That's a good color. We'll do that and then lighten it a little bit. I also um, will be, if any of you are from the Lancaster area, um, next weekend I'm going to have my artwork at Red Raven Art Company in downtown Lancaster. And it'll be up for the month of, <coughs> excuse me, the month of May. But um, I will be there Friday night, <clears throat> the 3rd, for First Friday. <coughs> and then again, <clears throat> I'll be there painting, doing a live painting, oil painting demo at the gallery on Saturday. I'll be there like from 11 to 3. If anybody's around, I'd love for you to come see me. That would be really fun. Um, is that good? Maybe just a little more white. I feel like it's such a simple palette, but usually they make the best paintings. And that warmed it up a little bit. A little bit of the yellow on my brush. Okay, let's just call that our palette. Nothing too crazy. Okay. Bring it back up here. Can everybody see okay? That silly light is sticking up there. I'm ready for let me push that down that's gonna bother me and is it above let me move it up a little bit so it's above the comments okay there we go and this light I am always so challenged by my lighting whenever I film I just can't ever get my lights the way I want them <clears throat> need a lighting expert to come and help me I had one of those. Okay. All right, I have my brushes. Um, oh, I need a little bit of um, 
sap green on my palette. <clears throat> if I can find it, see if I had a few of my colors put away, like every now and then I do, I would know right where the sap green is. I have no idea. All right, well, oh well. Give it one more minute here. Oh, here, I found it. I found it. No worries. <clears throat> okay. Green and pink. And I'm going to use my... No, I'm not. I was going to use my other medium that I've been liking that has linseed oil and gam sol, but there's none in the tube, so I'm going to use liquid. Okay, I'm ready. So now I'm gonna do my transparent layer and um, my friend asked me about the transparent layer to talk about it. And my transparent layer is really only paint that, um, it, it's not mixed with anything, it's just straight out of the tube. And oil paints, some of them are opaque, some of them are transparent. Um, and you have to like, kind of experiment with them. Or some of the tubes tell you on there whether they're opaque or transparent. But <clears throat> like my permanent rose, this is a transparent color. So when you put it on there, you see how you can see through it kind of. You can see through to the white of, of the substrate. So that's how you know it's transparent. So in, in this first layer when I paint, I only use transparent colors because I want um, the vibrancy um, like when I finish a painting, the most vibrant parts of the painting are sometimes the transparent color showing through in the end. I'm going to do big shapes right now. Transparent colors. So then as I uh, work into the painting more, I'm using um, opaque colors and I mix it into the transparent colors and then that's what gives it kind of the the mix of look and feel of transparent and opaque and this is my uh, magenta this is also transparent So these are not the colors that I already mixed up. These are transparent colors that I have on my palette that I used while mixing, but they're straight out of the tube. You're welcome, Sherry. And where is that center? Is right about. And if you can, it's good to keep your beginning layers like this very, um, what is the word I want? Very blocked in kind of shapes and colors, not get lost in any detail. It's a little. That's good. Let me get my green. I'm going to try and keep this one very simple. I always do seem to like my sim simpler compositions, my simpler everything of my paintings simplifying. But it's, I find that to do a simple painting is not, is harder, more challenging than one that's not as simple. Why is that? Why is simplicity so hard to achieve? I always say, I feel like you have to learn all the rules and forget them. And uh, learn to do it com in a complicated way and then learn to simplify, I guess, because then you have the skill sets to make it work. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Like, I feel like that with abstract art. I love abstract art, abstract paintings. And oops. I love to do them, but I feel like I haven't mastered what I'm doing yet enough to earn. That's another blog post I wanted to write about, earning um, permission to do it. Like, I feel like 
you can't really be an abstract artist till you're really good at being um, a representational artist because you have to know how to do things a certain way before you can do it. And I don't know if that's true or not. Sorry, I'm rambling today. Um, do a little bit. I'm mixing a little bit of ultramarine blue into my green just to find those pops of dark color in here. It's pretty. I feel like I haven't had my ultramarine blue out for a while. I sort of miss it. I'll use certain colors for a while in my paintings, and then, you know, they might just naturally fall away from being on my palette. Not for any reason other than maybe I started using a different color. Maybe I ran out of it and need to buy more. That happens too. Um, but then I find that I miss it and get it back out again. Oh, long lost friend. Okay. Learn the rules, then break them, they say. That's right, Allie. But there's so many rules to learn. When do we give ourselves permission to say, yeah, we know enough for now? I guess you never do finish learning. And that's the fun part about art is the learning part continues forever. All right. So now I'm getting out my pigment sticks. So where's everybody watching from today? Oh, I'm going to use, even though it's not necessarily a color in here, I'm quite smitten with this new um, cadmium coral color. So I'll just add just a touch because why not? Alabama, Tennessee. Leave me in the centers here. There's a little bit. Katy, Texas, Michigan, South Carolina, Athens, Georgia. Shelley's in Virginia. Barb is in Pittsburgh. Catherine, good morning. Mountain Home in Arkansas. How lovely. North of Chicago. Cold Lake, Alberta, Canada. Mississippi. Yes, this is an oil painting. I'm just using pigment sticks here. Um, just in this layer of my painting. Sunny Central Florida. Lucky you, Ellen. Hmm. Yeah, so my blog post that I'm writing today is all about the messy middle and how scary it is and how hard it is not to give up when you're in it. The painting I did yesterday, the messy middle was disproportionately long. Um, and I think it's because my what I was envisioning and what was happening were two different things. And I was writing a blog post about how sometimes you have to let go and just trust the process and not try to control it so much. That's also very difficult to learn. Tough lesson. All right. Well, that's fun. I'm going to stick with the big brush for now. So my brush is like, what is it? Is it an inch? It's about a little less, maybe three quarters of an inch. I just haven't found a great big brush like this that um, that I love as much as this one. Hopefully someday. I'm not giving up hope. I still buy all kinds of little brushes. Just none that I love like this that are, I mean, big brushes. What's everybody having today? Coffee or tea?
half cafe half caffeine coffee oh what brand this this is a rosemary and company eclipse short flat brush number 12 it's one of my favorites it is a great brush i just want it in lots bigger sizes My friend Beth took this photo where she was somewhere. I can't remember where she said it was. Sounded lovely. I wished I had gone with her. And she was thinking of me when she saw these flowers and took this, these photos. And I'm like, I love that people do that. That lo- Like they'll be somewhere and take photos for me because they're thinking of me like, how lucky am I? Okay, sip of my coffee. It is morning. Um, take my time. That's another thing art always teaches me to take my time. I'm always in a hurry. Always. Life has taught me to run from one thing to the next to get everything done in time. And I really don't need to do that anymore. It's hard to unlearn habits like that. Took my mother-in-law to the doctor appointment yesterday and we were walking through um, the health campus building to go get a test done and you can't hurry her. So she teaches me to slow down. That's one of the lessons I think she's around to teach me. Slow down. No hurrying with Anne. Do you use a medium? I only use a medium in my first layer. I used a little bit of liquid in my first layer and then I put it away. It amazes me how you put in other colors to the reference. Yes, I love to do that. Like I don't I don't want to paint it just like the reference image. I want to kind of let it inform me what it wants to do because, you know, then you could just look at that. I could do photorealism. Like that's something I had to do kind of for college. But I don't want to paint like that. I'm trying to get my style further and further from that. Because it's so much easier to paint exactly what you see than it is to let a painting take you on a journey. It's also how they stay so vibrant and not muddy. Yes, and I clean my brush off. This paint is coming along very quick. It is Irma. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I clean my brush off really well, but I'm still using the same brush I started with. Yeah, sometimes my paintings, I feel like they take forever to evolve and then other ones it happens much more quickly and that's a good observation she said love that take on it I don't know what I even said but Now I could use my uh, these little uh, my friend Beth who um, gave me this photo reference. She uses these um, little squeegee things, so I'm going to do that a little bit because that would be fun right now. It's only eight twenty-four. We have plenty of time. I don't need to hurry. where there are light areas. Kind of helps me map out where I'm at, where I'm going, what I want to keep light. And it gives it a little bit of whimsy, doesn't it? 
Not that word. I would like my art to be more whimsical. So you're kind of carving out your shapes using your darks to define it. Yes, and now I'm using this little squeegee thing to carve out my lights so that I see where I'm headed with those too also. <clears throat> that looks pretty cool like that, doesn't it? This is definitely the messy middle. All right, now I'm going to put that away. Get my brush back out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know why my table's bouncing. Sorry. up there the light value contrast really makes those dark shine it does that the biggest part of a painting is the values like I could paint this in completely different colors as long as I maintain the value shapes it would still look like what it is she says I love this it could almost be done right here I do like this part I just don't have the confidence to call it finished so I keep going but maybe someday I will able to say yep that's that's it I'm done with that painting I'm leaving it just the way it is it's a confidence thing too it's the biggest thing art teaches you is confidence <clears throat> especially when you create a painting and you have to show it to the world right there's no hiding it nor should you ever hide it Kind of finish my background. Think about where my edges are. <clears throat> the palette seems very warm. Would you say most of your colors you mixed were from warm or cool? Um, I would say mostly from warm, yes, because the the green's a warm green. Um, the permanent rose is definitely warm. I have some Indian yellow in here, so yes, it definitely is a warm palette. I think I'm most comfortable with a warm palette, but I don't always paint warm. Sometimes they become cool, and I don't know why. But I would say a warm palette is probably my fave. It's a sharp edge there. I think the background could about be finished because I just want to hint it. I don't want it to be too um, dominant. I love that pop of pink right there. I hope I can hold on to that. I too love warmer colors. Can't be the almost electric. I know. I love the electric hot pinks. Mm. I got a hot pink acrylic color. Like sometimes I play around with my acrylic paints. And it takes all my willpower not to put that in absolutely everything I work on. Like, where don't we need a little pop of hot pink in there? If we don't, let's put it in anyway. My 
brush is feeling a little large, but I'm going to try and persevere here and keep using it. I might have to use a smaller brush. The only reason I try not to is because I'm lazy about washing my brushes. I like to try and do a painting with one brush because then I have less to wash. That's not a very good reason, is it? Hmm. It's definitely a messy middle. trying to put down very intentional brush strokes. I'm going to go to a smaller brush because I keep thinking about it. That means I need to do it. Take a sip of my coffee, sit back and look to make sure I have my dark darks in there. I always add my lightest colors at the very end. I don't add my light colors until I'm pretty far along in the painting because I find that um, they get muddy if I do them too early. But it's also a little tricky to try and envision where you're going without them. Oh, I covered that pink. Oh, well, it happens. It happens. I got a little green on there. Let me clean my brush a little. I like that or not well, I gotta keep going here let me get my something about this I'm not happy with okay good morning let me see. Ooh, the accidental green kind of looked like a reflected light from the background. Accidental green from the background. Yeah, I don't know what you mean, but is it still there? Or did I lose it? <laughs> Whoops, I have a little bit of pigment stick there I have to clean off. Good morning. The white green space you were just working in. Does it look reflective? Get rid of that spot. Okay. Now let's go back into the flowers. I think I'm afraid of them now, so I've been avoiding them for the last few minutes. It's time to go back in there and see what we can do with a bit smaller brush. When you lose confidence and you walk, it's better to walk away, look at it from a distance, and then come back and work on it again. And I'm telling you that, but I didn't just do that, did I? I did go work on something else in the same painting, though, to stop thinking about it. I don't want it all to get muddy. Um... I think I need just a little bit of this. I'm going to use my Vasari Rosebud. I don't have any... I, I have too big of a jump between my pink and my whitish color, and I don't want it... It was too blue or something. I don't know what it was. It was too something. So 
so good at saying that. I never quite know what the problem is, but I'll say it's just too something. Too wrong. It just isn't right. It's getting better. Brighter right here. Good morning, Katrina. Hmm. I do look look at it through the camera too to see kind of how you're seeing it. That gives me a kind of a backed up perspective of the darks and lights, kind of. It's definitely a long, messy middle we're having here. It'll help when we start to put in some of the like little details in there. Got a little darker in there. What time is it? 8.38. We're still in good shape. Oops, I had a little something on my paintbrush there. Okay. The mid is a messy middle. I had this problem yesterday with a really extended, messy middle. I guess it's good practice, right? Is that what the, I should call this? <laughs> um, very, very messy middle. my elbow down on my palette here. I don't want to be doing that. <laughs> a messy middle masterpiece. Let's not call it that yet. It really isn't a messy middle when you're doing it. I don't know. It feels like a messy middle to me. I always say I'm afraid of the messy middle. Like I push my messy middle window and make it extra messy on purpose, but I wouldn't say that I'm comfortable in it. It's hard to think that it's going to turn out because it's so messy looking. Looks gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Allie. Good morning, Nancy. <clears throat> I 
I want to find this kind of peony. Do any of you know what kind of peony this is? They are my favorite, the ones that have like the, all that, like a party going on in the center there. I'm going to a, um, a peony farm in May where we get to tour the peonies and then she's going to teach us how to make a bouquet. And you know, I just really want to take photos. I mean, I'll be happy to bring home a bouquet, but I'm hoping they have this kind of peony. I don't, I don't know. And I like the mix, like when I'm doing peonies, like if you order them online, they're all the same. And I think you can put them in the refrigerator to keep them from um, all being open at the same time. But I like to have like a peony bud along with open peonies so that they're not all at the same stage. And like sometimes when you order them, or always when you order them, they're all the same uh, peony age. You know what I mean? But I think you can put them in the refrigerator. My friend Kim told me that. So I'm going to try it. here. I gave that a little dimension. I am and those are an important part this these two little petals here. Okay, what am I not seeing? It's, it's a lot going on for something that I started out so simple with, right? I need to push things back, pull things forward. <clears throat> That's what I'm thinking about before I go in and finish the centers. Um. <clears throat> that helped that a little bit. So I feel feel a little bit like this. Oh, I like that. Um, all right, do you see anything? What do I need to work on? I like my pops of color. Um, I see this needs to go, this needs to go further back. Yeah, that helped a little bit. <clears throat> so now I'm looking for areas where... where I can easily get lost in the weeds and start to make it too um, too tight. And then it loses its spontaneity. What do you see that it needs? Still 15 minutes. <clears throat> it's busy, isn't it? Um... Now 
And then if you start to put too many colors on, then it gets, that's when it starts to get muddy. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. This has kind of a dark. Little, there are little bits of the um, little center of the flower just popped around here, here and there. Centers are so cool looking. I'm holding my breath. I do these little bits. That makes such a big difference. You say it's a peony party. It is a peony party. I love a good peony party. Hmm. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Let me see. Any adjustments that I need to make? This is just a little too <clears throat> white. Bringing your eye down to the bottom a little bit too much. That's better. Um, your paintings always look better than the real thing. Thank you. And that is the fun of not making them too realistic too. They get to have their own personality. You see anything that I forgot about? It's a little lighter in here. Um, now I'm squinting at it and just looking to see if there's anything I need to do. And like I always say, once I start doing this and it starts to look different but not better, that means I need to put my brush down. I don't know if it's improving right now or not. I don't think I'm making it better. I think I need to put my brush down. Because I'm just changing it and not making it better. Um, all right, I'm going to sign it. Such cool peonies. Okay. <clears throat> so there is my reference image from Beth Babe. And then I'll show you in the little bits my painting. And. Thank you, Judy. And there's very simple palette, color palette. So thanks for, oh, and this is the one I was telling you about that I was working on yesterday. That now let me turn it, I'll show it to you. That had such a delayed, messy middle. There's a lot of light on that. It's hard to show you, but it's the same kind of peony. Um, so I'm writing a blog post about that now. So if you want to be on, gosh, the blue, I got these glasses that have like the blue block thing for sitting at a computer and they're just crazy blue. They look a little silly when there's light shining on them. <clears throat> Thank you, Ellen. Ellen said, thanks for sharing your process. So pretty. Anita said, it's great hanging. And Barb said, just love it. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. It was a fun Wednesday morning as always. Um, and I will save this and put it up on my YouTube. Now I'm looking at it <laughs> from the corner of my eye thinking, do I need to adjust anything? Um, 
And yeah, you know the drill. It'll be up on YouTube. And if you want to be on my newsletter list, just send me a note and I will add you. And thanks for coming and hanging out with me. It was fun. And I hope you have an amazing day. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming.